Yo, what's going on? This is Jose. I'm back at it again, doing the stream, stream life. Um, so thank you guys for showing up. Um, you know, channel once again. Here we are talking about design, all things design. Um, hit the like button, definitely subscribe. We got a whole ton of content coming out for you guys. Um, my channel specifically on U Media is about graphic design, and I'm doing posters. I'm doing posters with you guys. Uh, primarily because I think it's a great way to learn design. I think it's a great way to get your feet wet without having to worry too much about all these extra variables and formats. Um, those are definitely things that you'll need to learn going forward. But for now, if you just wanted to get your feet wet with making and trying to think visually, we're going to do it in poster form. So how I've been doing um, the last couple poster designs have been you know, we'll, we'll take a browse, we'll look for some posters, we'll see some that we like, and we'll try to, you know, we'll try to design it, reverse engineer it. Hopefully we'll get to something new. Um, and I think you'll be surprised along the way, the journey that we take to make some of these designs. So with that being started, with that being said, let's just get started. I'm gonna jump right in. I'm gonna start by, I just open up the last file that we worked on and I save it as a new version. Sort of, we could keep like a template. And if, I mean, if we look closely, this is the poster that we made, um, version one, version two. So it's pretty cool. I'm gonna go ahead and hit file, save as. And once again, I'm working on InDesign. Um, you don't need any of these softwares per se. They just help. They're you know they are professional, but um you can use GIMP for uh, for most things that we're doing in here. I'm just gonna go ahead and open up a new file, and each of these programs, I mainly do the poster alignment and layout in InDesign. I'll do any photo manipulation in Photoshop, and then I'll do any sort of vector art, stretching, pulling in Illustrator. All right, perfect. So now that I saved this as a new version, I'm gonna go ahead and delete what we had already. So I guess I can actually delete basically layer two. And everything pretty much in layer one. Damn. Just cleaning up the file, making it ready to go. Perfect. And this should all be in black. All right. And it's going to be number three. Right, and I'm gonna hit save on that. So this is pretty much set to go. I'll just center it for now. I don't have anything um, in mind or, or ready for this poster. We're gonna do that together. So this is, this will just live here for now. Okay. We are on Creative Exercise Three. I set up the file in InDesign. If you're wondering what all these purple and blue lines are, definitely be sure to check out one of my first videos where I went over baselines. I'm gonna go ahead and retitle the video so that you guys are you have a very clear understanding of, of what each video is about. I might make another video on baselines uh, that I feel should be like a lot shorter and more concise, so stay tuned for that. Um, but for now, 
what you're looking at is all the horizontal or the horizontal lines going down are the base lines our vertical lines are our columns and then our blue our, our three blue lines you see in there are our rows there are row guides that basically divide this poster into four main sections and this is basically the template that we're using we're working on a 0.5 margin and a 0.5 bleed uh, when I say 0.5 I mean in inches all right, and I have just the same thing opened up on Photoshop. I said no margins, no lines, and none of that. This is just for artwork. Um, same size, 11 by 17. Same thing on Illustrator. This is our vector art program, 11 by 17. What I will do is any graphics that I have in these two programs, I will make them, export them, and import them into the InDesign, and we'll do the final composition in InDesign. All right, so that's our basic setup for now. Let's take a look at some posters. And we're gonna basically find one to reverse engineer. So, what I have for you guys is typographicposters.com. And if you take a look, this website is super dope. It's actually been redesigned. And I see a couple posters that I like so far. So, Let's see this one. This is really dope. Museum of Contemporary Art in Belgrade. Belgrade. Not too sure, but that one's pretty dope. This one's also very nice. We got a lot of dope stuff here. I, I Let's try to make this. We can make um, this one or this one. I, I don't know. I think you guys want to see some color. I know you guys want to see some color. Let's see, poster for fog line. This is an exhibition in the same in this place, Belgrade. Let's just look up where this is. Oh, it's the capital of Serbia. This is nice. This is dope. All right. See, that's why I love designs. You, you get to see all the beautiful, you know, references that each design has. Wow. This is neat stuff, guys. All right, so let's go back. So this is a poster about an exhibition taking place in Belgrade. And immediately what I'm seeing is some sort of horizon line. It looks like water. It looks like almost a bridge. It almost looks like the bridge that we were just taking a look at. Uh, what could be King Alexander, which was the predecessor of the Broncos Bridge. It almost looks like it could be a bridge sort of thing. This is really, really, really nice. So we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna, let's recreate this one. What, I, what, what I'm seeing is some halftone imagery and we also have some logo work at the bottom, things like that. We can definitely change up the, the typography to say something else, but let's sort of stay within this general, within this general guideline. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and find an image of a horizon I'm gonna find an image of a waterline, something, you know, something similar. So, uh, this is actually a really nice image. If I had a bigger image of that, we, we could have used that. Uh, one dope place that I like to look at for images is the Library of Congress. Um, so let's try that first. And in the Library of Congress, we can search up things like Horizon, uh, water, beach. Let's go with search and digital collection, photos, prints, and drawings. And we will search up. Uh, let's just search up a bridge. 
っちにCity. That is insane. Can we look at this? Full online access to this is only real. Dang it. Okay. Let's see if we can narrow our results. I'm saying I was just reading something about like copyright and whatnot. So let's see if we can narrow it down to available online. There we go. That would make sense. So these are all images that are available online. This is a really cool image. This one is also a really cool image. I'm gonna go ahead and close the ones that we cannot access. All right, this one's cool. Let's open that. Up. or even a tip that's a huge that's a nice image I don't think it quite suits our purpose let's see intermediary rolls of film oh this is cool it's produced on a film this could be a, a, a contender let's keep looking What else can we um, can we break it down? Do we say digital photographs? Okay. Here we go. So we have color images. And these should all be available online. Let's list gallery. Can we do a gallery? That's cool guys, look at that. Let's see 160 results per page. The Golden Gate Bridge is always a freaking, that, that one's always like awesome. Oh, this is in Willimantic near the Frog Bridge. That's hilarious. Alrighty, we gotta, we gotta settle on an image here. We do gotta settle on an image here. Let's say this was an exhibition somewhere. We, I mean, the LA, the Golden Gate Bridge is an option. Just wanna do something that's a little bit different here. New York, New York isn't that different. Photographs. Oh wow, Muscle Shoals, Alabama. Yeah, that's huge. All right, I'm seeing a couple that are like. This is really cool. The Golden Gate Bridge is very pretty. That is very pretty. Um.
try to download this. All right, so step one is grab your image. Find your image. I like to use Library of Congress. It's a nice, fast way to get high resolution images. You can search for things that are copyright free and it's a whole archival database. Um, so we'll do save image as, and I'm just gonna say golden gate bridge. And I'm gonna save it in my folder. And we're gonna hit, I need to break these down by um, numbers, but it's all right, let's save. All right, let's upload this into Photoshop. We're gonna hit place link. And we're gonna do Golden Gate Bridge. Okay. Nice. And I'm just gonna stretch it to fill ever so slightly. This is looking very good and resolution is awesome. Can't complain. This is gonna work for our purposes. Let's give it a quick levels adjustment. Let's clip it. I just wanna give it some nice contrast. The whites are already pretty white. I don't want it, yeah. Something like that will start to happen. We could just bring the bottom out a little bit ever so slightly. All right, let's take a look uh, with adjustments, without adjustments. All right. Not that bad. Slight definition. That's good. I like it. We'll select both of those layers and we're going to right click and we're going to say duplicate. I'm gonna duplicate these into a new uh, file. And here we are. And the reason why I do that is because what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this into a grayscale image and then we're gonna half tone it through a bitmap. And that whole operation is gonna flatten our image and it's gonna not allow us to edit it fully until we fully complete the process. So because I wanna keep my original file and not have to worry about it, I'm gonna um, duplicate it into a new file. You'll see right away. So we'll go to image mode and we're gonna go to grayscale. It's gonna say changing modes can affect appearance of layers, merge layers before mode change. And we're gonna say merge. Discard color information to, con to control the conversion, use image adjustments, black and white. So you can actually control how much black and white there, there is going on in here. We're just gonna hit okay for now because we sort of made our adjustment with our, um, our levels. So this is cool for now. We're gonna go to image mode and we're gonna go to bitmap and it's gonna flatten everything. And we are gonna use halftone screen and we'll make sure that the, the output matches the input we hit OK. And I'll try these basic settings for now. All right, so it half toned it a lot. Like a big, a big, these are big half tones. Let's look at our example and see. So these are, this, this is pretty big half tones as well. Let's see if we could just notch these down ever so slightly. Okay, okay. Let's see if we do 15. Um, we could do 45 for the angle. Nice. So a little bit more definition on the half tone. It's looking, it's looking pretty nice. Um, and maybe it's too, too much definition. I'll go back one 
and I'll try the same setting, but we're gonna try something in between 10 and 15. Let's try 12. Okay. Nice. All right, we can do 12. Uh, won't let us unlock because we're actually in still the bitmap mode, so we'll go back to grayscale. Hit OK. And then we can do that. And I can actually duplicate this back into my original file. Uh, let's save this as really quickly. We're going to save it as creative exercise. Uh, let's hit OK. Go back and we're going to duplicate this layer into creative exercise five and hit okay nice so now underneath that we have the reg regular image and we have the bitmap what's cool is we can actually apply like uh yeah you can actually apply a blend mode to our halftone and you'll get something like this so it's actually a cool way of adding like a little transparency um but if that's not something you want you know definitely you can take off the blend mode I just keep trying different things really quickly here. Luminosity is cool. It's nice because it gives it, you know, some color as opposed to no color. Divide is pretty cool. We'll probably experiment with some of that. Ooh, look at that. Exclusion. Soft light, hard light. So this is with this is with the image in the back. This is without the image. With the image, without the image, there is a slight color that pops into the image, which I do enjoy. So we'll leave that for now. Lumin, I mean, well, we'll leave that as an option for now. Luminosity. But what we're actually going to do is we're going to try to change the color of our halftone, and we're going to do that. We'll see if we can do that with selective color, and we're going to go down to blacks. So you see what happens here, I was like turning green. If we look at the previous example, actually, that's sort of what they have going on here. So it's like a, like a line, like a greenish line. Um, and we could, you know, that's pretty cool. I, I do like orange. I do like orange. Um, let's go back down to zero on this. Blue's really nice. Let's actually, let's actually go with blue because it has like a nice, or even a teal. Yeah, let's go with this color. Because it gives it a nice, it, it goes well with the cloud, I think. Like the clouds of the bridge. And we'll just cap this, mask that onto, we'll mask the selective color layer only on the bitmap image. And I just want to see what'll happen now if we, if we put a blend mode on top oh that's pretty cool oh wow we're getting some very oh these are very interesting colors you can tell i've never done this before because like i'm just enamored by the colors So there's definitely going to be some experiments for us to do going forward. That's also pretty, pretty dope. That's pretty cool. This is without, uh, no color, no blend. Let's give it a blend. It's it definitely adding some tonal, some tonal range to it that I really enjoy. Like even that might be cool. This is actually where it's at. Divide. Let's go with that because the Golden Gate Bridge is red. And so it has the red 
peeking through the clouds of peeking through those clouds. What I'll do is actually I'll actually group all of these and I'll actually duplicate this because what I want to do is merge this group into one whole image. And then what I'm going to do is actually put another adjustment layer on it. And let's see if we do hue and saturation. I don't know what this is going to do. So yeah, we'll saturate the colors just a little bit. So this is with no saturation. This is just saturating it a little bit more. Just so that we get, you know, some really beautiful colors coming out. We can actually try adjusting it ever so slightly. This is doing a lot to it, right? That's cool. This is zero. And then we can pull it back ever so slightly. We'll, we'll get more like teal. I don't know how much of I'm a fan of that. We could pull it this way and get a little more orange. Yeah, let's just pull it this way. The clouds come out a little bit more. Um, yeah. We want to we want to just like the brightness of it too much. Can we can leave it there? So this is without the adjustment is with the adjustment without the adjustment with the adjustment so as you can see just bring some more color into it so this is working out fine I actually I'm enjoying this image that we got here and if we look um, it's something sort of similar to what's going on uh, it's just a half tone image and it's giving you know it's it's giving off like some colors and a dope and a dope vibe so we're ready to actually bring this into InDesign, so I'm gonna save this, and I'm gonna hit File, Export, Quick Export as PNG, and I'm gonna actually title it Image because this is actually the image that we'll use on the poster. So let's go into InDesign, and we're gonna make sure first off that we go to Pages. We have our page selected. We're gonna go to Layers. We're gonna make sure our layer is selected. Uh, we don't have much going on but this is good practice and I'm gonna make an additional layer because our words we could keep all our type and our information separate from our image and typically our words are gonna go on top of our image so I'm gonna bring layer one up or you can do bring layer two down doesn't matter and I'm just gonna lock layer one for now because I'm not gonna edit it I'm gonna be editing on layer two and I'm gonna start a new uh, like frame tool. I'm gonna start a new frame, I'm not, and I'm gonna make it the same size as the poster. Actually, this would be like where you would bleed, where you would use your bleed, um, because if you have an image that's gonna be fully to the size of the entire format, you want to give it a certain bleed so that you can account for any trimming adjustments. Right now our bleed is pretty big. Um, we might not need it all the way stretched out, but let's just see how it looks like that. We can always adjust our bleed if we need to. So I'm gonna go to file and then I'm gonna go to place. And I'm about and I'm going to place our image. If you wanted to see more options when you hit import, you can always show import options, and I'll show you what that looks like. You hit open. And it'll give you some things like use transparent use transparency information. We're just gonna keep that yes. Um, color. You could also have a different, you know, color profile for the image. We're gonna keep it all the same. And you know, everything is the same. I usually never really use import options, but it's there for me too. Now, if you're wondering what happened, first off, that looks pretty sick. But if you're wondering what happened, uh, it's because when you open up the image, you place it sometimes, it just enhances it and it becomes very large. So all we gotta do is right click on the image, fitting, and we're gonna fit the content proportionally. 
So as you can see, it's actually locked in there pretty well. And what I'm going to do is, in our example, the bottom section is cut off from the image. It almost looks like the image actually comes on top of it a little bit, like the opacity just went down. Um, for our purposes though, let's actually cut it flat off at the bottom. So to do that, I'm just gonna bring the frame tool up to our first section. Let's see what that looks like. And so this is what we have. So it is a really big gap on the bottom, but that's okay. Um, because we got some information that we want to plug in for now. So we'll leave it alone. I'm going to go ahead and lock layer two. So now I can't adjust this. I can't uh, edit it or nothing. And I'm going to start dropping in my information. So we got a text block in the top right corner. I mean, top left corner. So let's add that. One other thing I can see is that I can't, I can tell that I can't see my baseline. So I'm gonna go ahead, InDesign Preferences. I'm gonna go down to Grids. And I'm just gonna hit that box so that I can see basically my grid, my grid now. And I'm going to hit P for the text. Select my layer. And I'm gonna come over to the first three columns and I'm gonna go down just I could go down to the first uh, section. I'm gonna hit escape and just, yeah, take a look at it. Now we'll pick our font. We can use something similar to it. Um, I have Cooper Hewitt. Let's try that. Let's try a medium. And we're working with a baseline of 12. So I'm gonna set my leading at 12. The font seems pretty big on a previous example, so I'll start first with 36. Uh, and we can use it at a 36 font uh, point lead. And it looks like it's just the name of this person. Yeah, the person's name is Sonja Zubik. I could be pronouncing that totally wrong. So I'm sorry. But, yes. What's... This might pertain to the name of it, like fog line. Yeah, so let's use fog line as the wording. And it actually matches our image really well because we got a lot of fog in our image. Enter, and we're gonna have the name of our artist. So we're gonna go Cooper Hewitt, and instead of medium, we'll use bold. See how that looks, and we'll use uh, 60 font size 60 with letting size 60. And I'm gonna put the name. It, it's going to be Z Vic. All right, and I got to find these glyphs. So, what we're going to do is I'm going to highlight Z and I'm going to go to glyphs and I want to show entire font and we'll go down and we'll try to find. Oh, okay. There it goes. Perfect. And then we're going to have the C. So I'll highlight the C. And we'll try to find it. Got this information in there. 
um, and it seems like I want to tone down I think maybe this is too bold maybe it doesn't need to be that bold so maybe it could be semi bold nice okay now underneath we're gonna have the date so 16.09 dot and then dash so it's like September 16th to September 26th. So we'll go down, we'll make another text box. We can actually probably put it like the entire size of this. And we'll go to Cooper Hewitt. We'll do book and we'll make it 60. We'll have the letting at 60. And it's going to be 16.09. And then it's going to be space dash 26.09. And I know we got to do some work on that, so don't worry about it. 16.09. Okay. So it's my, I, my understanding that this needs to be bigger, so let's try 120. Maybe too big, yeah, too big. So I'll start 108. Still too big. Let's try, uh, I need my calculator. 12 times nine, oh, yeah, so 12 times eight, six, eight, six. We could, we could theoretically censor this, but I'm not sure if that would help us. Let's take a look. Hmm. It needs something. The, the tracking looks decent on it. I think it just needs to be bigger. But the problem is that we're that we're I'm moving in multiples of eight. Um, we could bring the tracking in ever so slightly. Okay, that's not that bad. Yeah, that's pretty much right on right on the money. All right, cool. Underneath that, we're going to have a bunch of logos and stuff. So underneath that, we can put our sub information. And before we do that, I actually I'm going to hit right click, text frame options, baseline, and I'm going to make sure that these are fixed to the letting. So now that our letters are sitting on the baseline, we'll bring them down ever so slightly. Nice. So what we can do now is we can size this down a bit. We could size down 12 font. And let's see how that looks. Okay. What we can do now is we can actually uh, left align these nice let's see if we put it towards the edge over here um, some logos let's put in the Harvard Public Library logo Put the new media logo.
fitting the content properly uh, proportionally. Very nice. And let's put the media logo in there. Fitting fit content proportion. Probably gonna get some of this too. Probably wanna bring it down ever so slightly. Fitting fit content proportion. I want to bring it down ever so slightly till the end. Fitting, fit content proportion. You want to bring it over. Nice. So everything is sitting well within our margins. Perfect. Take a look. Very nice. All right. Let's see what else we have to add. Got our logos in there. All right, so my only thing now is the image does come down pretty tight to the letters or the dates. So I'm gonna actually try to do that. Let it come down like they do right there. Okay, very nice. And then there's a line underneath. There's like a rule right underneath our date that we can actually do as well. Right across. Increase the line width. actually see that line slightly thicker so we'll make our slightly well it actually could be the same size so we have one. but that looks a little better it just needs the same margin so this is one space two space one space two space three space so one space two space three space so it needs to be here nice so that looks pretty proportional proportional there all right so this exhibition also needs the name of the gallery that is going to be um that's going to be shown in and we have that information here so the Udi puts gallery so let's see if we can look that up any of this but that seems like it's the logo let's go to images mm. all right so this is like the gallery actually put these words in there and it also looks like the words could be half toned as well but um, we won't half tone them um, I, I don't think we will have to half tone them there's another way that we can do it go delete InDesign we're 
now I'm gonna go back to layers. I'm gonna lock this layer. I'm gonna make sure I'm on my infinite, our typography layer. And I'm gonna put the gallery name right in here where it is on the original poster. And we are going to do Cooper Hewitt, um, semi bold. We'll do it in 36 size font. Spelled it Galeria. And I'm going to make sure that these are all small caps. All right. And I'm actually also going to do text frame, make sure that these are sitting on the baseline. Okay. And we can tell that they are. Very nice. Look, this one is pretty close to the edge there, so I'm gonna bring it down. Close the shape slightly, take a look. That seems about right. I'm gonna go up and just make sure that this text box is also set to letting as well. Quick inspection, and it is. All right, very nice. Um, the last thing I will say is that we can try actually bringing the image down because the bottom looks very white, which is like very, like it's like it's such a big contrast, like image and then, and then white space. So I'll show you a trick on how we can blend it in a little bit more. We're gonna take all our information off for now and just look at our image. I am I'm going to actually move the, the line into that layer for now, and I'll lock it. Perfect. So we're only working with layer two. I'm going to duplicate our image so that we have uh, two of them. I'm going to lock the top one, and I'm only going to work with the bottom one. So for the bottom, what I'm actually going to do is I'm only going to do the bottom half and drop it down one line. So what we can see is that we take off visibility of the top layer, we we'll only have the bottom layer. Take visibility off of the bottom layer, we we'll only have the top layer. If we have them both on, we have the image. So what I figured we could do was take the bottom layer and actually just give it a slight opacity change. So we can actually bring down, oh, let's select it. We can actually bring down this opacity to a, you know, a quarter opacity, say 25%. So that is just slightly there and let's see how it's looking with so that's how it's gonna look with the image. Now we can see how it looks like with all the information. And as you can see, it's there. Our um, logos are showing up, but there's a way that we can get rid of that too. I'm gonna actually tone down this bottom half even more. Or I mean, we could see if a blend mode makes a difference, but actually it won't make a difference because it's actually on top, it's actually on the bottom of the image, so it won't make a difference. But it's alright. We can bring this down ever so slightly, say 13. So it's there. Could bring it down even more. Seven percent. Oh, it's not changing. Uh, I gotta hit seven and then hit enter. So it's there. It's not actually making a huge difference. I don't know if we need it. Oh, let's make it 15%. Yeah, ultimately, 
I don't know if I'll stay with it. It looks more like a gimmick. But really quickly, if we, if we did want to see how we can keep it and like use our logos, select the logo effects and you just hit a multiply on it. Multiply. And we're gone, you know, there's no background there. So, you know, if you liked it this way, you can keep it like that. Personally, I'm not a big fan of it. I actually, I'm, I'm more like if or that, you know, I'm more of like a hard edge person. So it's got to be serving a purpose or not, you know, and I feel like it's more of just like a gimmick having it there. This looks more clean to me. So ultimately, I won't I won't stay with it. Um, so we have this there. I want to see if there's anything left for us to add as we wrap this up. I personally might make the... I, I might see if I want to increase the width of this line just to match the width of our dash. All right, so that seems more on par with my style, how I like it, how I like things. Um, I could see if I can actually push back the tracking so that the 16 and the nine actually sit where where our line is so the tracking we can bring it we can say it was on 20 we could see if it, it'll go negative 18 perfect let's see if it goes negative 16 all right, let's see if it goes negative 14. Nice, let's see if it goes negative 12. This might be it, because I think negative 10 wouldn't fit. Yeah, okay. Perfect. So now we, what we did was we pushed the words out pretty much where they can go. Um, I guess you could do it slightly more. You could try something like negative 11. Still won't work, okay. It needs to be negative 12. I wonder if, <laughs> I wonder if negative 11.5 is a thing. Still won't work, okay. All right, we'll leave it like that for now. What else can we do to this? This is pretty much, you know, creative exercise three. This is for Harvard Public Library. Um, pretty much, I guess I'll say the last thing is we can make sure that, there we go. We can bring up the logos to sort of match the baseline of the library, the word library. So we can bring up the meter ever so slightly. And that way they just sit on a rule. U Media seems like the exception because it it doesn't have too much of like a high component to it. So what I might do is actually just bring it up. Or I can bring down library so that it's just slightly more down. Oh, that's what I'll do. I'll put the word library on yeah that'll work so library is now sitting on the baseline that makes more sense okay i just want to double check i wonder if this even if that actually says fog line so let's actually translate this to serbian Is lo los ba is let's do is los ba 
Oh, exhibition. That would make way more sense. Exhibition. And then, oh, that's what it says. This wording right here is fog line. Okay, we can actually put that in. We can actually put that in the image. So let's do that. So here. Yeah, here we'll just say exhibition. I just wanna see what that looks like. That's pretty, that's pretty tough too. Like if we could get the words to do something like that, that'd be that'd be pretty cool. But I don't know if we can. Let's say vision. All right. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put fog line words in the same size as this. What? So what I'm going to do now is I wrap up this poster with you guys. I'm going to work in size 60. So let's go back to Photoshop. We'll turn all this off except for the background. And I'll make a new, I will make a new text frame. Actually, how can I do this? How can I do this? Maybe I'll make it in Illustrator actually. say Cooper we're gonna do Cooper shooter medium size 60 with I just want to go back and double check this is semi bold okay semi bold There, let's make a copy. Let's do all caps. And then what I'll do after that is probably put like a gradient on it. And I'll put it going down. So let's rotate this. white to black okay let's put our gradient so for some reason it's not applying maybe I gotta do create outlines
sure why my gradient isn't working. Hmm. I try a different gradient. What if we made this object compound path? There we go. Okay. Gradient, and let's make sure that actually it's not on white that it's on no opacity and we'll bring it in something like that and let's make sure that our slot is on like registration Let's copy this and let's paste it into this file. Hit OK for now. And I basically want to half tone this. So Details on this file mode, bin map, and then I'll do my frequency at like 15. That's cool. I'll do mode bit map frequency at maybe 20. All right, we should leave it like that. Scale. Okay, and I'm actually going to crop this now. So I pretty much just want to get the words. pretty much have the words itself and I'm gonna go file export quick export as the creative exercise five underscore and I'm just gonna title it five line perfect let's go to InDesign and I'm going to place it somewhere underneath here make the box probably yay big file place and we're gonna go five line Actually, we want to look at the size, how the size compares. It's pretty much right on par. Great. Actually, just going to bring it down slightly right there. Nice fog line. And we can actually even put it somewhere near the clouds if that's cool. almost like the word is right above the word fog line I wonder just for haha -ha, if we can actually move it to the other side and see how that looks like fog line that's pretty cool 
So it's on, it's in its own world over there. Let's see if we could move it back ever so slightly. is very cool um, I just don't know if I like it over here or over there um, I think that's fine right here because I think if it's a little bit too closer if it's a little bit too close to the bridge it kind of interferes with it a little bit I would say I don't know I'll put it there that's fine so there you have it folks um, actually I'll do one last thing with you guys because I always do it I always do it and it's hilarious let's go to export I'm gonna basically texturize this and make it look like a real poster let's go to save all oh, this is fine Perfect, that's gonna pop up. Very nice. So we're gonna open it basically in Photoshop. File, place link. And we're gonna place the PDF. And we're gonna crop to the media box. All right, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna find a texture because I got a whole lot of textures, uh, and they're all from Black Market. We're gonna go to our posters, PNGs, and let's take a look at some of these. Just a really slight, like even something like this is cool. I thought this one was pretty cool too. But um, even something like this, it just gives it a real subtle poster vibe. I've used this one before and I kind of like it. And then we'll just apply a blend Oh, that's pretty cool. because it has like tiny drips on them I definitely want to practice these more with you guys which is why I keep doing them but um like some of the adjustments over there Let's see overlay and then let's put like a levels adjustment on it. Let's just actually clip it only. There we go. All right, so we're gonna bring some of the texture out of the poster like that. And I guess you just don't see any on the bottom where the where the um, the white is because it just doesn't have a texture below there, if if or it doesn't have any color, so it's hard for the filter to try to do to try to compute what it would look like underneath there because it's blank. Um, so yeah, but anyways, here we are. This is our poster. This is actually pretty cool, guys. I'm happy that I had the chance to make this with you guys. Um, I love doing stuff like this. This is, you know, what I'm here for. So, um, I hope you guys enjoyed today's, uh, today's episode. I'm going to be, you know, streaming way more with y'all. We're doing stuff like this. We're recreating posters. This is, 
you know, part of how you learn design. Um, and, you know, we got a whole website. Go ahead and check it out, typographicposters.com. You can check out more work just like this. We were using uh, this image uh, today for our inspiration, and we ended up coming up with this image. So this was really dope, guys. I'm happy, like I said, I'm happy I was able to do this with you. Um, yeah, and I'll see you at in the next stream. One love. It's, it's Jose. It's been real. It's been fun.